Hi guys, uh, this is Jotir from SSW TV. Welcome to NDC Sydney 2019. I'm joined here by uh, Jennifer. We did a pretty awesome talk on Angular Forms. So Jennifer, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Jennifer Wadella. I'm the lead Angular developer at a consulting company called Batovi. And so I do everything from helping clients, you know, write better Angular code to giving speakings and trainings all over the world. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so what, what, what are you gonna show us today? Um, I'm going to talk about uh, something that I feel like people run into a lot of problems with uh, when maybe they have some sort of dynamic form that they want to create. And um, based on a user interaction, they might want to add fields to this form or remove fields from this form. Awesome. Um, yeah, and so um, of course, one of the, the unfortunate things about um, the Angular ecosystem being so vast is sometimes the documentation always isn't the greatest. And so it can be kind of a bit of a struggle to figure out how to do things. Uh, but uh, I'm a big fan of the Reactive Forms API. Um, that allows us to take a more reactive approach to programming instead of being um, template driven, meaning we're having to do all this um, manipulation inside the HTML. Uh, you can get a little bit better uh, granular control taking a more reactive forms approach. Cool. Um, so just, just before we jump yeah. in, uh, can you just tell us in which case, in which scenarios would you use template driven forms versus reactive forms? That's a great question. Um, so. Uh, Template-driven forms, if you come from AngularJS, are going to be um, fairly familiar. You know, you're binding the ng model and you're watch watching for changes and everything like that. So if you've got, like, let's say a very basic login form where you've maybe got um, an, an email and a password, uh, you know, and, and some basic validation around mm -hmm. that, you'll probably be okay with template-driven forms. Uh, the second you have um, any sort of dependency, like maybe you have one uh, form input and another value is dependent on that form input, and then you might want to make changes to your validation or changes to um, the requiredness of a field depending on, on different um, forms, I think reactive forms is a better approach for that um, to help you handle some really, really complex scenarios. Or if you are dealing with um, creating dynamic forms where you're wanting to be um, adding controls or creating controls on the fly, or maybe you're dealing with you're just right. large data sets where you want to go through and programmatically create a form based on some sort of data that you're getting. Um, all those I think are, are, um, are great use cases for reactive forms over template driven forms. Right. So it's, it's, not, it's not really about the, the size of the form itself, it's more about its complexity. Isn't exactly. It? Sweet. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead, show me what you have. Okay, so um, let's uh, have a s situation. Uh, I'm a really big fan of uh, RuPaul's Drag Race and there's a Drag Race API, so I end up using that for a lot of my examples. But let's say I want to have some sort of form where I'm like a, a Drag Race super fan and I wanna create um, a form of like all my favorite drag queens and maybe the seasons they appear in or something like that. Um, and beginning to uh, figure out how to, how to create a form like this. Um, so maybe I have a form called um, My Queens and I'm going to basically want to create an array and inside of that array, I wanna have an object um, representing every queen. So maybe that's a, a queen's name in her season or maybe that's a queen and, and a quote, whatever. Um, so the important thing to know are the kind of the basic building blocks of reactive forms. And so the first thing we have is our form control, which is um, what's going to be tied to an input in the DOM. Um, so anytime you're wanting to get a piece of information, whether it's an input, whether it's a text area, whether it's a select radio button, whatever, Whatever, that's a form control. Um, if we want to group our form controls, we're going to use form group, which is going to create an object of those controls. Um, and then form array is going to create an array of either form groups or form controls. So just having a basic understanding of how these elements play together is like 90% of the way there for what you need to do um, with, with any Angular form development. Uh, can you nest form groups as well? Absolutely. You that can nest. Cool. All day, yeah. So, because a lot of people like they go in and they're like, okay, I, I have this this structure in mind of what I need to to submit to to an API, right? Um, but then they don't necessarily understand like that there is a building block in Angular for each of these mm -hmm. these different form constructs. Um, so. Let's say we've got a form array. Okay, I've got a form group. Um, and inside my form group, I want to have a name uh, that's gonna be a form control. Um, and I'm just gonna initialize that with no value. And I'm gonna have like a season um, that's gonna be a form control. So when you define your new form, form control, sorry, when you create your yep. new form control, at this stage, you don't specify what kind of control it is, right? That's, that's in the template that you bind it to specific inputs, isn't it? At this, yes. at this stage, you don't say, all right, this is going to be represented by um, like a checkbox or whatever, right? Yeah, so um, from this standpoint, like a form control simply represents a, a single piece of, of data that you're going to okay. submit. So at, at the end of the day, like you don't need to know whether that's a radio or whether that's an input. That is purely something that we provide to a user to give them a cohesive experience. So that gotcha. doesn't really matter. 
Um, so in this case, I'm, I'm creating a form array. We've just got a single form group right now. Um, so the first thing that uh, people get really hung up on, uh, I think, is how to go ahead and uh, begin to uh, create this in the DOM. Um, if I can pull up my file correctly. There's my component file. OK. Um, and I just spun up a new um, component here because it's just kind of a, a playground for me. But um, if I want to go ahead and start my form, I'm going to use my um, form group binding um, and pass in whatever I have named my, my form array to be, which in this case is my queens. Uh, it's always interesting typing somewhere other than your home desk. <laughs> like I hate when I get up to a podium at a conference and it's like boxed in and you're like T-Rex yep. arming to try and I get your you. code. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's say in this case, I know that I'm going to have an array and I know that I'm going to want to iterate through that array to show each each form group in this instance. And that form group, again, is going to have two controls inside of it. It's going to have my drag queen name and it's going to have season. Um, so I'm a big fan of using ng container because um, that allows us to use um, you know any sort of logic and that way I'm not adding a bunch of extra markup to the DOM um, and so I can go and uh, use a, a for loop uh, to iterate through that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, form group uh, just so somebody coming in behind me can read my code and say okay I understand what's going on here so I'm going to call that form group. Thank you for that. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know the old axe. Oh, thing. yes, I do. Yes, OK. Um, and then whatever array I'm iterating through, I can call um, the, the name of that component and then uh, dot control. Um, excuse me. Uh, and I can spell correctly, and that'll be <laughs> even better. Um, so basically, uh, when you go in and, and you look at a form, it's, it's going to have a control, and that's going to allow you to iterate through everything. Um, and I might even have like slides up somewhere that I can kind of show this prettier before we start. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, iterating through our form controls, um, and then we can go ahead. And the next important thing to remember is um, I'm a big fan of using form control name. Uh, and so instead of having to iterate through the controls, this is a getter based on whatever that that gotcha. value is that yep. we've set, right? Um, so we can go ahead and we can bind again. Um, to the, this form group variable that we've created. Um, so we can go ahead and do form group, uh, use our form group directive. Uh, and then inside of there, we'll be able to go ahead and create all our different form controls that we care about. Um, so in this case, I care about, uh, I'm gonna have a name in my label because I want to make sure that I'm writing semantic code. So my uh, form is very accessible. And then I'm gonna have an input um, and then I can use the form control name uh, directive to go ahead and tie that to my name value. And then the same thing for my season value. Uh. But um, that so that form control name property that you're binding here is is kind of a magic string, isn't it? I mean, it's not like you could type name two and it, this would still compile because it's not it's not bound to. Uh, if you go back to your component, yep, that name, yep. uh, you know, relates to that guy here. Yep. but there's no type safety around that, that form control group that you have, right? Um, there's not type safety, but if you were to try and um, tie a form. Um, like if you were to type just like blah here, that actually yep. wouldn't compile because it would be looking for a form control okay. that does not exist. Cool. So not necessarily type safety, but um, yeah. And I feel like um, a lot of times that's what you'll see um, when people are starting to try and understand forms and they'll say, you know, um, form control cannot be found or I don't remember the exact error message. Um, so when you see that, typically that's going to mean that um, the, the form control you're trying to bind to, you haven't written that name correctly. Um, or the other scenario is if you have not imported um, the reactive forms module into your root app module. So those are kind of two of the error messages that I see people get hung up on gotcha. a lot. Yep. Um, so at this point, uh, basically every time that we have a new form group inside of our my queen's form array, uh, this this structure uh, with the form group is going to be represented, and so we'll get repeat there. Um, so the next thing that people really get hung up on are like, okay, that easy enough to iterate through, right? Um, well, how how do I go ahead and get a new form control into this group? Um, and so it's important to know that. Um, <clears throat> 
uh, the form array has um, two different methods for handling this situation. So uh, we can use, use our IntelliSense here, um, and we've got a um, insert at and a remove at. Um, insert, excuse me. Um, and so uh, by calling the insert method, we can go ahead and it's um, uh, asking for some sort of form control to be passed to it. And we can pass it a form group, we can pass it a form group. And so that's how we can go ahead and begin to dynamically insert form controls or form nice. groups into there. Um, and then the same thing for uh, the remove at method, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass it an index. Yeah, so. Yeah, if we were, let's say, had a bunch of uh, things here and uh, we wanted, um, I can't remember the syntax for this. Um, uh, index, uh, I don't remember the exact syntax, but um, is that, no. Mm. Oh, let, yeah, you there you go. oh yeah, I yeah, was there right. You go. You Nailed it, it. Nailed it. <laughs> so take a, that, jet lag. That's, uh, that's the problem with IntelliSense, isn't it? So we tend to forget how to do simple things because they're done for us. Yeah, they right? auto-generate it. Like, God bless <laughs> Emmett. Okay, so anyway, um, so at this point, we would have the index of, of each um, form group. And so as we're iterating through, we can get a hold of that index and call a method that says, okay, let's go ahead and remove at, pass it this index. And then inside of um, here, like maybe we have a, a method um, called, you know, uh, remove group. Uh, and we'll go ahead and pass in the index from there, and then we can call. Um, yeah, you remove that. With, yeah, with remove that, index. that at our mm -hmm. index. Um, nice. Yeah, so uh, you know, just all the functionality is there under the hood. Like you shouldn't have to do any weird like you know push or anything like that because I feel like that's what people um, tend to do right away. There's a, they're like, okay, well I have an array. Well let me just treat it like an array and like do a push or anything like that. Um, but you know the native functionality is there and it's provided. And the important thing um, when you're doing anything with, with forms in Angular is to um, really have a good understanding of what's going on because they do a great job with handling validation um, and everything like that. So try not to reinvent the wheel. Make sure yeah. you're very aware of the underlying API so you're not having to rewrite a bunch of code and then figuring out how to validate and then trying to deal with a bunch of different complex scenarios. All right, thank you very much, Jennifer. That was a pretty amazing demonstration. Um, so just, just to sum it up a little bit, um, um, so we've covered how to create um, a, a reactive form uh, with the basic building blocks being the form controls and the form groups, uh, how to create your um, you know, form control array and, and iterate through it to dynamically generate that form. Um, we've also seen how to add and remove items from that form. And I, I hope you guys uh, realize how easy it is to, to do that and um, how much simpler it is compared to template-driven forms. Um, so really, thank you very much for your time. And we hope to see you next time on the SSW TV.